Hi guys, this is John Adamson, the rehab and documentation guru. And today I'm in the hospital with my son who had back surgery, but uh, he's doing great, so nothing to be worried about there. Um, today we're going to pick on my documentation. As you may know, I've moved back into clinical treatment and I'm doing home health. And this is an analysis that I wrote on a daily visit. Quick uh, explanation about this patient. She has some cardiac issues and balance issues related to a stroke and some TIAs. Uh, youngish lady, but doing well. But one of her problems was cardiac insufficiency with activity where her systolic blood pressure would actually drop 20, 25 millimeters of mercury during activity, which is not a normal uh, cardiac reaction. It's a sign of cardiac insufficiency and she'd get lightheaded. You know, so not good clinical signs. And this was one of the reasons I said the patient was homebound was abnormal cardiac parameters with activity. But she made progress. And on this particular day, uh, through objective findings, and I've talked a lot about objectivity, I was able to show that her response was much improved and more normalized. So this was an analysis I wrote. So let's pick it apart because I'm looking at it with fresh eyes several days after I wrote it. And let's see, is it okay as an analysis? Um, so anyway, I say, I say patient noted to have vastly improved cardiac response to activity with increased systolic blood pressure with activity rather than decreased. So let's start there with um, talking about some of the wording. Um, usually I try to stay away from emotionally charged words, uh, but this word vastly I threw in there because I want to set in the mind of the reviewer that I am making awesome gains with this patient um, through my treatment. And so um, I don't usually use them, but sometimes I do. <clears throat> for a specific purpose to try to get them in the mindset that, wow, therapy is really valuable here. Um, so I point out that we've made a, a critical change in the patient's response, and now we're getting a more appropriate cardiovascular response with activity. Uh, but then I go on to say, patient continues, however, to demonstrate need for addressing cardiopulmonary endurance because still evident lack of timely systolic recovery after activity, placing the patient at risk, uh, at risk in this area. So let me tell you what was going on. She was still not recovering. Um, her systolic blood pressure was remaining higher for two and a half, three minutes after activity, which is not a normal response. And so it was still evident that her cardiovascular system uh, she well, she lacked cardiovascular endurance. So anyway, I was pointing out there's still issues that we need to resolve here. Uh, let's move on. Patients left hip weakness slash positive Trendelenburg indicates a risk factor for gait and indicates necessity for addressing this area. So on this particular day, I hadn't really looked at like... Um, I hadn't broken down the underlying impairments for all her gait deficits yet. I'd done a Tinetti, I'd done a 30 second chair rise on this patient, but I really looked a little bit more carefully at um, her gait and I noticed that she was positive um, for hip abductor weakness on that side. And so I brought that new finding, as I've talked about in my course and on my blueprint for a proper analysis video, I brought that clinical finding into the fold of my analysis to talk about the fact that this is an additional area we need to address. Um, let's move on. Patient demonstrates ongoing medical necessity for home therapy due to, and one of the things we want to talk about um, on an ongoing basis is why does the patient need therapy in the setting that we're delivering care? And in home, in the home setting, especially under part A, home care, um, you're justifying things like homebound status and um, why can't they go to outpatient therapy? And so let's look at, did I make a case for it? Uh, so in, I've gotten into doing like bullets in some of my analysis statements. So here's my reasons. Uh, continued homebound status with abnormal systolic blood pressure response to moderate activity. Now, looking back at this, I think, well, moderate activity, it's not really a great statement. 
it's not very objective. Um, I could have worded that better, um, but I did have um, good measurements to support an abnormal systolic response. So um, this this um, lends to taxing effort, which is a video I did recently that prevents the patient from going out on a regular basis. Um, also, I pointed out high fall risk with multifaceted gait and balance deficits with lower extremity strength and coordination a factor in this. Um, one thing that this patient had was a uh, uh, about a 16 out of 28 on the Tinetti, so high fall risk. And I pointed out through the measurement in my other documentation exactly what was going on from a gait standpoint. So this is a, another evidence-based reason that this patient needs home care uh, rather than maybe transitioning to outpatient. And then here's another one, knowledge, I could have worded this better, knowledge of safety with mobility, which means that the intrinsic physical factors leading to fall risk are of paramount importance to be addressed due to cognitive forgetfulness, uh, due to cognitive forgetfulness being a challenge for the patient. I could have worded that better. Um, and this is what I documented objectively in other parts. This lady has very early onset dementia. She's being treated for it. She knows she's forgetful. Um, and what's going on is she would often forget to use her walker and just kind of leave it behind. And so when you have patients that have cognition issues, uh, the more you can maximize um, like the biophysical capabilities of the patient, the safer you're going to keep them. And so what I'm not doing a very good job of expressing here is the fact that if we can work on her balance, her coordination, her strength, um, her cardiovascular endurance, um, despite her cognitive performance deficit, we will make her safer. And so that's what I'm trying to get across. Uh, but anyway, um, that was my analysis on a given day. Um, looking back at it, I see some opportunity, but I just, I present that to you as um, I also, like you, am doing documentation now pretty much on a daily basis and working hard to apply my own training principles so that um, I can make sure I get paid for what I do. Anyway, this has been John Adamson, the Rehab and Documentation Guru. Hoping that you found this helpful. Um, please like and subscribe and put any comments you like in, in uh, underneath this video because I'd like to know what you might see picking apart my documentation. And um, as always, I'll be looking for any suggestions you have for future videos. Have a great night. Take care and God bless.